My name is Sarah and I work for the St. Louis Zoo Education Department and today we are going to do an animal or webinar on animal dads. Now I want to mention first that if I was at the zoo I would normally have my mask on like this but because I'm in my home I'm going to keep it down here so that you can hear and see me better okay. So before we get started, I want to go over our community learning standards. These are just some standards that we'd like all attendees to adhere to so that we can have a safe and fun learning environment. So the first community learning standard is I will be friendly and respectful of others in my interactions in the chat box. Number two, I will use the Q&A box for relevant and appropriate questions. Three, I will use the chat box to respond and interact in regards to the webinar topic. Four, I understand that if the moderator of the webinar has asked me to alter my behavior in the chat, I may be asked to be removed from the webinar. All right, and a few more things before we get started. Please share in the chat box where you are from and how many people are watching with you. I see a few of us have already done that. If you don't know where the chat box is, hover down below at the base of your Zoom screen and you will see a chat feature. It's a little um, talking bubble and you can share information there. Awesome, we've got someone from Quincy, St. Louis. Fabulous, welcome everyone. Fantastic, I'm glad you're all here today. Thanks for tuning in. So there's another feature that we're gonna be using a little bit later in the webinar called the Q&A box, question and answer box. If you would like to submit any questions at any time during the webinar, you can do so through this feature. It's close to the chat feature. Um, it's just gonna say Q&A, and I think it's got two chat bubbles on it. And we will try to answer as many questions as we can. We'll also at the end of the webinar have a little, um, Q&A session too, to try to answer some more questions. We do have a tech person behind the scenes. Her name is Chris, and she's going to be helping me out uh, monitoring questions, uh, progressing slides for me. So if you hear me talking to her, that's who I'm talking to. And the last thing, we will take an enjoyment poll at the end. So please make sure to stay tuned to fill that out so that we know how you liked today's webinar. All right, so let's get started. So we are going to start with a poll. It will pop up on your screen. And I just want to know who you're watching with today. Because we're learning about animal dads, are you watching with your dad today? If you're not, that's okay. You might be watching with another friend or maybe by yourself. So let's see who's everyone watching with today. Looks like a lot of people are watching by themselves today. I'm still super glad that you're here. And once we finish learning, you can relay all this fun information to your dads and to your families. All right, so let's get started with the learning. I'll take the next slide, Chris. Okay, so all animal families are unique. Some animals live with both mom and dad. Some animals are raised only by their moms. And then some animals even raise themselves. Like here we have a picture of a sea turtle. They don't have any help from their parents. The eggs are laid, then they hatch on their own, and then they have to make it all the way to the ocean by themselves. So all the animal families are a little bit unique, but all of these options work wonderfully for the animals involved. It's how they've adapted. It's how their animal species works. So all of these ways are good ways. But today we're gonna to learn about the best animal dads in the animal kingdom. So now I'd love to talk about some of the great dads that we have at our zoo, the St. Louis Zoo. Next slide, Chris. Okay, so let's start with one of my favorite animals, the Asian elephant. So at our zoo, we have one male Asian elephant. His name is Raja and he has helped father several elephant calves over the years. You can tell he's the male because he's the only one with big tusks that come out of his body. Asian elephants, only the boys have tusks, the girls do not. 
So the next time you're at the zoo, if you see the one elephant with tusks, you know that it's Raja, our male. So male elephants don't typically help raise their young. In the wild, that's left to the female elephants. The moms, the aunties, and the babies all live together. And that's the same with us at the St. Louis Zoo. So you won't um, ever see Raja with the other one. Some exciting news, our female elephant, Ronnie, is currently pregnant with a baby and due to give birth sometime this summer. And Raja is the dad. All right, moving on to our African lions. We have a pair, Ngozi and Kabara, and they live together. At the St. Louis Zoo, they've been together for many years. And since they've been together, they have produced three cubs. You can count them, one, two, three. Those cubs have since gone on to live at other zoos and they've had children of their own. So right now, Kabara and Ngozi are the grandparents of nine lions. So we can see them all up there. So they've got nine grandchildren and some of those children have had cubs of their own. So Ngozi and Kabara are actually great grandparents. They've had a lot, their family tree has gotten really big. So they are an awesome animal parent couple. Next slide. In the wild, lions live in prides. That's one male and then a bunch of females and their cubs live together. And the male is the father to all the cubs. The females are in charge of food and hunting, and the male is in charge of keeping everybody safe. All right, so moving on to some of our bird friends at the St. Louis Zoo, we have um, a king penguin named Nathan, and he lives in our Penguin and Puffin Coast, and he has helped to rear at least four chicks while he's lived at the St. Louis Zoo. Male king penguins are great dads, they take turns with the mom to keep the egg warm until it hatches. They do this by passing the egg back and forth on their feet and keep it warm underneath their bellies. They do this for 60 days until that egg is ready to hatch. And once the baby has hatched, the mom and dad will take care of it together. They will feed it by throwing food back up that they've chewed. Mm. Okay, so you guys ready to try it? Let's be penguin parents. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to find a small ball or maybe crumple up a piece of paper like I've done here. And this is gonna be our egg. So I'll give you guys one minute to gather that, okay? And then come back to the webinar and we're gonna be penguin parents together. So with your ball of paper, that's our egg, you are gonna practice walking like a penguin parent. So you're going to set it on your feet like this. Oops, you mine's already falling. It's hard work. You might have to lift your toes up a little bit. Now see if you can walk around with that paper still on your feet. It's pretty hard work, isn't it? Okay. So it's a little easier for penguins because their bellies go almost all the way to the ground and it can help keep that egg in place. Now with a partner, I wanna see if you can pass it back and forth with your feet like a penguin mom and dad would do. So here's my penguin partner on the ground here. I'm gonna see if I can pass it along, not using my hands or my wings, just my feet. Sort of worked. <laughs> All right, how did you guys do? You can let us know in the chat. Some people are saying it was hard. Some people are saying they did well. Yeah, it's a kind of a hard thing to do. I feel like it's kind of a hard thing to do because our bodies are not the same as penguins, but it's fun to try. So next slide, we're gonna move on to our next animal dad and he is a colobus monkey named Kima. He's the dominant male of our colobus monkey troop 
at the zoo. He has six kids that live with him and two more that are all grown up and they live at other zoos now. So he's the dominant male, meaning his job is to watch over the whole troop and protect them and to play with the youngsters. Next slide. So we have a rhinoceros hornbill pair at our birdhouse. They've been together since 2013. And in that time, they have produced eight chicks. So they're very good parents together and they like each other a lot. They're very affectionate. They can even be seen sharing food sometimes and making soft vocalizations, so talking to each other. During nesting, the mom seals herself into a nest log for three months, relying on the dad to bring her and her chicks food that whole time. So let's try it ourselves. Okay, we're going to be a rhinoceros hornbill dad. So mom has sealed herself into a mud nest. Here at the zoo, we provide them with a barrel, but in the wild, they would just find a hollowed out tree or log. And she sealed herself in with in the nest using mud and um, sticks and stuff. And she's laid her eggs, so she's in there and she leaves a tiny little hole so that dad can still bring her food. So we're the dads. We need to go fly to a fruit tree and bring her some food. So let's fly to our fruit tree using our beak, pick off some fruit, fly back to our um, mud nest and carefully give her the food through the tiny hole. So we do that as many times as we need to, to help keep mom full. And then when mom is ready to lay or for her egg to hatch after a while. So whilst the egg is now hatched, she's got to be in there with the baby chick. So the dad's job doubles. He's got to bring food for mom and baby. So we're going to get some more food because now they need a lot more. All right, so fly to a fruit tree, grab our fruit, fly on back, and feed it carefully through that same hole for mom and baby. So dad will do that until um, they don't need him anymore to do that. Eventually the trick will, the chick will grow so big that there won't be room for mom. So she'll break out of the log nest. Then together they'll seal it back up because the chick's still not ready. And then both the mom and dad will keep bringing the chick food until he is adult size and able to be on his own. So they do a lot of work together. They're very good parents. All right. We're gonna look at our next zoo dad, our green and black poison dart frog. They are surprisingly good parents. After a female lays the eggs in a pool of water, she will leave, but the dad comes back to the eggs to make sure they stay really wet because they need to be in water, they need to constantly be moist. And then in two weeks, those eggs will hatch. So now they're tadpoles, but the dad needs to bring them to a new spot to keep them safe. So he will come back and the tadpoles will climb on his back one by one and he will carry them to another pond or um, body of water to keep them cool. So he'll carry one, drop it off, come back, another one will climb on, he'll carry them again. So he'll do this for as many tadpoles as he needs to. And then six weeks later, those tadpoles will develop into adult frogs. Next slide. Our last animal dad at the St. Louis Zoo that we're gonna feature is the American Bearing Beetle. So these guys are great parents, but they like something that most of us would think is pretty gross. Dead animal carcasses. Ooh, the bearing beetles love them. They can smell them, these dead animals, from miles away. And when they find one that they like, a male and female pair will move it to a better site to make their love nest. They do this in a pretty amazing way. They're very strong. They will lie on their backs and pass it over like this. 
So they'll lie on their back, they'll have their hands and their feet in the air, and they will pass it between each other. And we have a little video to watch to show you guys exactly how that works. Um, we're not gonna do the sound. And just so you guys know before we start, um, this video, they do show a dead animal, they show a dead rodent. So if that would bother you, you can just um, turn away from your computer for about a minute and then come back, okay? So here we see um, a rodent in a vegetable garden. And the rodent dies natural causes. Rodents don't live very long. And then the burying beetles will smell that and they will come find it. And then they will lift it, just two of them. And they'll bring it to a better spot that they think is safer. So you can see the burying beetles underneath, lying on their backs, using their legs to move that animal. So here you get a good picture of how they do it. So watch closely. They're underneath that animal. So see, they climb under it and then they push it along. Isn't that amazing? Thanks, Chris, that's great. So they're pretty amazing parents. They do a lot for their kids. So I'm gonna ask you guys, can you do this? We're gonna find, go find a pillow or something like heavier and bigger than yourself. And I'm gonna see if you guys can pass it along as a pair and um, pass it back and forth and see how far across the room you can get. So I'll give you guys one minute to do that and then we'll come back together and see how you did. I am curious if you guys have time in the chat to let me know how you did. Was it hard? Was it easy? Were you able to move it with your partner? It's a lot of teamwork. So the bearing beetles, again, they're very good parents. So once they found a good spot, they worked together to bury that carcass into the ground and they removed the larger bones, they, um, the scales, the feathers, they embalm it really and they prepare to put their eggs in there. They use that carcass for a lot of stuff. So then when the eggs hatch, both parents will chew and spit up the food, the rest of the dead animal carcass to help the kids eat. And they'll help their kids feed until they're old enough to feed themselves. So they're pretty cool. Kind of gross, but very helpful for, um, you know, getting rid of dead animals that are around. All right, so I'm gonna pop up another poll. I'd love to see what everyone's favorite zoo dad was today. Did you like the elephant, the lion, the king penguin, the colobus monkey, the rhinoceros hornbill, the green and black poison dart frog, or the American bearing beetle? What was your favorite dad? We've got the lion, the rhinoceros hornbill right now is the favorite. Oh, tied with the lion now. A few more seconds on this poll. So not everyone has voted, but right now the lion is the favorite. Okay, good to know. All right, we came in with the favorite as the lion. So I'm gonna pop up the um, enjoyment poll. So that's all the information I have for you guys today. So Chris can do that. Let us know if you guys enjoyed today's webinar. And while you do that, also it's time for a Q&A session. So if you guys have questions, please submit them in the Q&A box and I'd be happy to take a few minutes to answer them. Okay, so we've got a few questions. Okay. Are there any other books you can recommend about animal families? Great question. There are lots of wonderful books about animal families. One of my other favorites is about a penguin family. 
It's called Entango Makes Three, and it's about two male uh, penguins in Central Park Zoo that um, wanted to be parents so badly, they were given the opportunity to be given an egg and were successful at being parents. So I really like that book a lot. And there are a lot of other really great ones about being animal families. My other recommendation would just be to Google it and you'll come up with a lot of great options. And then I had someone else ask, are, am I going to be a mom? I am. So you might have noticed uh, when we were doing our penguin pass, I am going to be a mom. I'm um, due in September with a baby girl. And then I had someone else ask, what is my favorite animal, dad? So um, we, I really like Asian elephants, but my favorite dad, I would have to say of the ones that we talked about today, I'm gonna go with the bearing beetle. They did a really good job. This concludes our webinar. Thank you so much for attending. Um, a quick announcement, the St. Louis Zoo is now open. And if you'd like to make a reservation to um, come and see us, you can do that at our website, stlzoo.org. Um, and again, thanks for coming and I hope you have a wonderful day.